I think eventually there'll be considerable trouble because of the wretched excess. That's the way it's usually worked in the past. But when it's going to come and how bad it will be, I can't tell you. Charlie Munger is a renowned figure known for his fluid, versatile thinking, in addition to his role as co-headlining the Berkshire Affair and a range of other corporate and humanitarian endeavors. Investors like him provide valuable advice on how to cope with recession in this economy. Keep watching this video to know more about Munger's predictions about investment during recession. Munger received training as a meteorologist during World War II and as a lawyer at Harvard before focusing on business has heavily incorporated the study of psychology, economics, physics, biology, and history into the creation of his multiple mental models approach to solving challenging issues in complex social systems. It is an innovative system. According to Charlie Munger, the current state of the market is similar to that in the 1970s when inflation was out of control and the Federal Reserve was forced to do whatever it took to bring it down, even if doing so caused a recession. Charlie Munger earned $70,000 annually from a $1,000 investment he made more than 60 years ago and has probably profited over $1 million overall from the profitable bet. At Berkshire Hathaway's annual shareholder meeting, Warren Buffett's business partner revealed the original cost of his oil royalties and their current yield. Munger emphasizes the need of beginning early and persevering for a lengthy amount of time by comparing the process of becoming wealthy to rolling a snowball down a long hill. Also important in this process of accumulating riches is longevity. In 2023's recession-stricken economy, advice from investors like Munger seems important to follow. Even if they push the U.S. economy into a slight recession, Charlie Munger is in favor of the Federal Reserve's attempts to combat inflation. According to Warren Buffett's business partner and vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, the Fed is willing to have a little recession in order to not have out-of-control inflation. Prior to recovering to have a positive GDP in 2022, the U.S. did experience two consecutively negative quarterly GDP results related mostly to the high price earned from energy exports. There is a very high likelihood that the United States will experience a recession in 2023, regardless of what experts or the government think that we had or are in one now. This is because of a number of causes. A recession is caused by high interest rates, high bond yields, high inflation, an increase in layoffs, and declining company sales and earnings. Less money available for consumers to spend on their discretionary requirements has a cascading effect on the economy, slowing down the flow of money into areas where they can be spent on things other than necessities like rent, food, and electricity. High labor expenses, wholesale costs of goods, material costs, and energy bills also reduce corporate profit margins, leaving little money for capital expenditures for facility and equipment upgrades and business expansion. Along with the historical GDP and job figures, which also give us a high possibility of a recession, these are all significant economic reasons that are weighing heavily on the country. Inflation for the entire year in 2023 rose to a 40-year high of 9.1% in June, before falling to 7.7% in October. In response, the Fed raised interest rates in an effort to slow the economy and reduce price inflation. For almost zero at the beginning of the year to a range of 3.75 to 4% today, it has increased its benchmark rate and hinted that it may reach a peak above 5%. Munger has pointed out that the Bank of Japan has been following its ultra-low rate policy for years. According to Munger, the central bank in Japan today has made our central bank look like a little mouse that hardly attempts to do anything. The 98-year-old investor said he generally approves of the Fed and said that when the pandemic hits in 2020, the Fed saved the economy by lowering rates and increasing asset purchases. We were in so much difficulty when all this began that he claimed that if the Fed hadn't taken such active action, things would have been far worse than they are now. Munger gives advice on IPOs. Initial public offerings or IPOs skyrocket when there is money in the system because everyone and their dog is trying to raise money for their company by going public, and investors are desperate to find a place to invest their money. He asks, but do you think that the money invested in those 1,000 IPOs in 2021 was invested in profitable companies? Of course not. After all, the reason they are raising money in the first place is because they want to go public. 
Munger has undoubtedly amassed a sizable fortune from the royalties over the years. Regardless of whether he receives $70,000, $100,000 or any other sum per year, this kind of passive income contributes to the explanation of why Munger has been content to receive a small $100,000 salary from Berkshire for many years. Additionally, he holds the great majority of his roughly $2 billion fortune in dividend-free Berkshire stock. The following is the best piece of advice that Munger offers to the youngsters who wish to start investing. He states that when it comes to creating long-term wealth, the importance of earning your first $100,000 cannot be overstated. The late 1990s saw Charlie Munger, the renowned investor and vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway Inc., make the astute statement. The first $100,000 is a bitch, but you gotta do it. Find a way to get your hands on $100,000 no matter what it takes, even if it means walking everywhere and just eating food that was bought with a coupon. Respected investing and money management professionals who see this first achievement as a crucial step towards financial prosperity agree with Munger's recommendations. Given that many savers and investors have considerably higher-end goals, the significance of saving $100,000 becomes even more clear. $100,000 in 1998 was equivalent to roughly $186,581 today. In terms of purchasing power, a gain of $86,581 over a period of 25 years. This figure takes into account the average annual rate of inflation throughout this time, which works out to a cumulative price rise of 86.58%. It's not easy to hit the $100,000 threshold, especially when you're young. However, it provides financial security that may be useful in navigating unforeseen financial difficulties. It gives investors the confidence to take calculated investment risks, creating prospects for projects with larger risks and greater potential for payoff. A pertinent comment from Charlie Munger is provided by Janet Lowe in her book, Damn Right! Behind the Scenes with Berkshire Hathaway billionaire Charlie Munger. He argues that the hardest aspect of earning wealth without any startup money is to accumulate the first $100,000. Reaching the first million needs constant underspending of income, which is the next obstacle. The companies in Charlie Munger's portfolio are able to withstand a number of these stresses. Berkshire Hathaway has a number of companies that sell goods that customers frequently need and has some price power. The largest primary industry in Berkshire is insurance, which is recession-proof because consumers must keep their insurance regardless of general economic conditions. In times of market turbulence, Berkshire also raises funds to buy value stocks or even whole businesses using the cash flow from its insurance activities. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Do you agree with the ideas of Charlie Munger? Let us know in the comments. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel if you like our content. Until next time, see you again.